Hi and welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Last week on our Facebook Lives we had Ink Week and many of you asked for a quick reference guide to what inks we went through and what inks you can use in the future. So I decided to do a bit of a wrap up video that you can refer to at any time. There's also a link blog post in the description below this video. You may have to click a little downward arrow to be able to get to it, um, but that will always be permalinked there for you. So I'm going to start with my ink case that you saw on my studio tour. I'm going to take you through each drawer, we can look at the inks that I have, and then we'll do some stamping as well. So first of all I have distress inks. So you get the normal distress inks that many of us have used before, and there are the new distress oxides. Distress inks are dye based, distress oxides are pigment based, and they're a great example of the difference between the two. So a dye ink and a pigment ink are both water based. A dye ink is thinner and will absorb into your paper to give you a slightly different look when you actually stamp the image out compared to what's on the pad. A pigment ink is actually a thicker ink that will sit on top of your paper and quite often requires heat drying or embossing to make it fully set. Now both of these are water-based so you need to use them with alcohol-based colouring mediums and they will not work with your watercolours or with some of your water-based pens like your Zigs or your Stampin' Markers unless you heat emboss them and even then I still don't really recommend them. I would go with something of a solvent base but we'll get to that later. So I'm going to skip quite a lot over the distress oxides in this video. I'm going to actually do a complete distress um, product video in a couple of weeks, which we have scheduled on our Facebook Lives. And again, I'll do a wrap up and we'll go through distress inks, distress paints, distress, distress sprays, and all the different um, mediums that you can get in the distress line. Then the next draw down, I have my Hero Arts pads. So I have the neons, I have the ombres, and I have the cubes as well. All of these are dye and water based so again you want to be using them with your um, alcohol based colouring mediums or stamping out with them um, particularly with the ombre and then just leaving them for a beautiful effect. The next draw down are my Ulta New Cubes and my Lawn Fawn dye inks. Again these are dye based so they're water based and they'll be the same as the Hero Arts. Then in the next one, I have my hybrid pads. Now hybrid is something completely new and very different. I've tried a few of the different hybrids and I really like the my favorite things. A hybrid pad is great because you never have to think, what pad should I use depending on what I'm using to color in? You can color in anything. You can use Copics, watercolor paints and Zig markers all on the same project and it's absolutely fine because your hybrid ink won't run. So if you're looking for one ink pad that does it all, then I recommend going with hybrid. And as you can see, I have quite a few of them in lots of different colors. There are in fact three different drawers of them. Then in the next drawer down, I have my waffle flower inks. These are a beautiful set of colors that come in the waffle flower set. Again, they're dye based, so they're water based and you would use them with something like your Copics or just for stamping out with some color. The same applies to the Simon Says stamp pads that I also have here. And then in the next drawer down, I have my Adirondack pads. Now Adirondack come in this beigey colour, which is dye based, or they come in a black case, which is pigment based, and they follow the same rules as we've already discussed. I also have opal light pads, something which we'll cover in another video, but just for reference, these are a pigment based pad. I also have my Stazon. Stazon is not my favourite pad at all and I was so pleased when hybrid pads came out because I find Stazon very thick, very gloopy and somewhat difficult to work with. It's great for stamping on acetate and it's great for shrinky dinks but anything apart from that I really don't particularly like to use it. I much prefer now using my hybrids. Stazon was great um, when it was the only option available. If you do have Stazon pads you can use any water-based colouring medium with them. So you can use your Zig pens, you can use your Stampin' Write markers, you can use your Distress markers, you can use watercolour paints, anything that involves water. Your Wink Stellas also won't run, neither will your Stickles if you use these. We'll also look at some chalk pads. Chalk pads are pigment based and that's what gives them that chalky effect and allows the colour to lay on top of the paper so you can use it on dark cardstocks as well. And finally, just something I want to briefly cover here are some speciality pads which we'll cover in our second video on speciality and embossing inks. So there's the clear resist pad from Ranger and there's a castaway bleach pad. 
In the second video, we're also going to look at embossing inks, embossing powders, and some of these other speciality products, but we'll save that for the second video. So now I'm gonna move over to my desk and I'm gonna show you my top recommendations for black outline pads before we do some stamping. So you'll have seen in my studio tour that in my top drawer, I keep close at hand lots of black ink pads. Yeah. Now this drawer, uh, I primarily now dig for one ink pad and you may have guessed it would be the My Favourite Things Hybrid Black Lit Crush. I've linked this up in the blog post in a few different stores if you want to get your own. Now if you're looking for one black ink pad that does it all, the My Favourite Things Black Lit Crush is the one to go for. It's one investment and you can use it with all your colouring mediums. You can use it with alcohol markers, your Copics, your Spectrum Noirs. You can use it with um, watercolour paints. You can use it with uh, zig pens, stamping markers, distress markers. Whatever you have, you can use this with it. It's even Gamsol proof when you use your colouring pencils. Now, if you don't have the My Favourite Things pad, or you maybe have lots of other pads in your collection, I'm going to take you through everything else in my drawer as well and tell you what my, some of my top picks are. So I do keep my archival black uh, Stampin' Up! ink pad here. It's had many, many uses, and in fact, I have two of them in this drawer. They are great pads. They are dye-based, so they're great for use, uh, again, with your Copic markers if this is the only black pad you have. It's not so great for when you're trying to do some watercolour and things like that. It does have a tendency to run if you add too much water to it. If you're going to be colouring with your Copics, my top pick is Memento. Memento is an amazing ink. It gives you a nice image. It's nice and crisp. It's not too thick and it will dry really quickly. I do tend to give most things a blast on my heat gun before I start colouring with any medium, but you don't necessarily need to with a Memento. Now there's also the stays on. I have a real anti stays on feeling. I really don't like it. It's too thick, it's gloopy, it often smears, it takes a long time to dry. I've had some really um, bad experiences with stays on. It is great if you want to stamp on acetate. You can still use your hybrid and it will dry, it just takes a little bit longer. And it's great for shrinky dinks because it still gives you that good image when it all scales back down again. There is a place for stays on, but it really isn't one of my favourite inks. One thing with stays on is I would always heat dry it, and you can of course use water with it because it's solvent based. That rule of we always use opposites still applies. The other thing I have in here is my Adirondack pigment pad. This is a lovely pad because you can emboss with it. So if I want to do some clear embossing on top of black ink, this is the pad that I'm going to reach for. It gives me a nice image, I've had it for years, they last forever, and they're a really good quality pad as well. The other thing with the Adirondack pads that I should add is you can emboss on glossy cardstock. Some pigment inks, even when you heat emboss, won't completely dry, but the Adirondack will. Next up, I have two lawn form pads. Now, they say they're slightly different, but I'm not entirely sure of the formulations inside. The uh, Black Licorice, not to be confused with the My Favourite Things Black Licorice, is a dye-based pad. So this is water-based and I have used it with Copics very successfully. So that's one thing you can do. And they come in lots and lots of colours, so you could get a nice variety for your stamping. They also do this jet black. This also says that it's uh, a water base, so you can use it with your alcohol markers and they say it's specially formulated to use with alcohol markers. I did give it a quick trial and it came out really nicely. So it's something that I'd be happy to recommend to you if you're looking for a brand to stick with, then Lawn Fawn is there for you too. Now one other that I keep close at hand, this is the old packaging and this is the new, is the Ranger Archival. This is a really nice pad to use. Now it is, does say waterproof, but it does have a dye base as well. So in theory, you can use it with everything, but it's not quite a hybrid pad. It's a little bit hit and miss. It gives you a nice impression. And if you just want a really nice black outline, this is the pad I would say is gonna give you that. Um, and many of us used to use it for many years. So that wraps up our outline stamping. So let's do a little bit of stamping with each ink type and you can see how I use them and what happens if you use the wrong inks. Here I have a great selection of inks, some cardstock. I'm going to be showing you using a Copic marker, a Zig clean colour pen, a Ranger Distress marker in the brush corduroy, and also a Stampin' Write marker. 
I'm using Nina Solar White and I'm using some Ranger Black cardstock. I'm going to be showing you using this lovely Hero Arts London stamp. It's a vulcanized rubber on a wood mount, which we don't see very often anymore. There's an entire series of these stamps for all sorts of cities around the world. And I'll make sure I link up in the blog post, the search to have a look at all the different cities for ones you may have visited or ones in where you may have friends and want to use on a card. I'll also be cleaning with my stamp chamois. Now this was also in my studio tour and I'll also link it up in this blog post. This is the stamp chamois. This is not how they arrive. They are a lovely green color like this, but mine is well loved. I keep it in this coconut, which gives it just the right amount of air not to dry out, but not too much, um, not too much air so that it will go solid. So you also don't get any of those nasty smells by keeping it in here. Now the way I keep this moist on a regular basis, depending on how much I'm stamping, I take my really big water spritzer here and I put a couple of spritzes of this in and I also could put a couple of spritzes of my stamp cleaner in here. And then I just keep this covered when I'm not using it and I open it when I am. So this will be off to the side as well. Now here, let's grab some white cardstock and we're gonna start off with the Lawn Fawn Premium Dye Ink Pad. Now the way I open these, I find these really hard to open when you get a new ink pad. It's often really difficult to get a start. So I take my favorite tweezers you see me using all the time and I'll link these up too because they're great for positioning your photopolymers as well. And they just open things with such ease. So we'll start with this lovely guava color, which I think is a beautiful color. We'll take one piece. And what I also tend to do is I grab the pad at the bottom of my Misty. So this is one of the little stamp pads and I'm going to be using this underneath my cardstock. So I'll put this on here. Now you also asked me how is it best to ink up your stamp. Now my recommendation is you take, you hold your stamp in one hand. Now I'm a lefty so I do this um, stamp in my right, ink pad in my left. You may well do it differently. And I tap and I keep going all over until I'm happy that I've got a reasonable impression. Now the one thing with wood stamps, of course, is we can't keep going back like we can with our Misty. Even if you use the stamp and majig it's never quite the same, I don't think, and you often end up with a smear. So let's hope that we get a good impression. I know the stamp gives a good impression, it's more about the user for this one. So I'm gonna stamp this down, and we get a lovely impression, that lovely corally color. Now I'm just going to heat dry it, just. Uh, because we're on a video to make it quicker. So I heat, just make sure it's nice and hot and we'll just go over it quickly. Now these lawn form pads are available in lots and lots of colours but I just wanted to show you one of the pretty ones rather than the black one uh, on this video. So if you use a water-based marker, they tend to be a bit hit and miss. Now I've heat dried it, so I'm gonna get a slightly better effect, but it is going to smear that image, and I'm well aware that these colors don't particularly go together. But if I take an alcohol marker on something like the shard here, it's not gonna budge at all because it's water-based. So if you heat emboss, you may get away with being able to use something water-based rather than smearing it. But I would thoroughly recommend using something different if you need to. As you can see here, it's not budged at all, whereas here it has gone a little bit fuzzy underneath the gherkin. So I'm going to write on this one just so that you can refer back to it if you need to. Let me just grab a pen out my drawer. So this is the Lawn Fawn. die pad. Okay, so that's our first option. Now let's just clean up our stamp. Like this. And grab another piece of our white cardstock. And we're going to try the waffle flower. So again, this is die based. Again, it's gonna give you a lovely impression in a great bright color. This is called Oh Happy Day and it really reminds me of a lovely sunshine color. 
So let's stamp this down. And you can see again how lovely and crisp it is. It's giving me a nice impression and it's in that lovely bright sunflower orange. Now if I grab my Zig Clean Colour pen and I colour in my red bus, not particularly well, and I hold this up to the camera, you'll see that bus has lost all definition because I've used a water-based pen on a water-based ink pad. So that's why you can't do the two. However, if I took my Copic and I colour in my shard again, like so, and I'm doing this very roughly here, and I'll bring this up again, you'll see that hasn't budged at all because I'm using alcohol with the water. So that's where that really opposites um, comes in again. So let's write this down as a waffle flower. Pad. So that's another option that you have. Let's again clean up our stamp. So rather than keep stamping them out, the uh, Simon Says Stamp will give you exactly the same effect as these two other die pads and they're another great pad that stamps out brilliantly. So they're my top three favourite die pads. Now I also wanted to show you the Hero Arts Ombre and the Hero Arts Neon. Now when I bought this neon pad, I saw it on clearance in a store and I thought, oh my goodness, it's bright pink, I've got to have it, but I'm probably never ever going to use it because who wants a colour that looks like that? Well, when I stamped it out, I got the biggest shock of my life because it stamps out the most beautiful shade. So never ever will I judge an ink colour by its case and I really should know better by now but I still have those uh, feelings too. So they also give you a lovely impression but I wanted to show you how beautiful some of the tones in these neon pads are. So they, I have the pink, the green and the blue and I think that's a really lovely cerise pink and I can think of lots of things that I'd like to do with some flowers and things with these neon pads and again they're dye based so you can't use your watercolour markers but you can use your Spectrum Noirs or your Copics. Now you also asked how to ink up a pad using an umbra or an ombre pad. So my tips for this, so this is the perfect size stamp for this, this is one of the new colours, this is called light purple to great purple and it's a really pretty graduation. So you can decide whether you want light to dark or dark to light, depending which way up you want to go. I'm going to go dark to light in this London scene. Now I place my stamp on top, so I'm just going to show you how it is right now. And then when I ink it up, I'm going to move it just marginally up and marginally down just to blend those graduations because I don't want any dark lines. And again, I'm still using that nice tapping method. I've got some good coverage, I think. We shall find out. So again, we stamp it down quite firmly. Don't rock your stamp like this because you'll end up with a blurred image. Just press firmly all over. So I missed the top and the bottom just slightly, but you can see there that lovely graduation. I've got this dark here, this mid purple, and then it goes to this really lovely light color at the top here. So that's how to use an ombre pad. And I'll also write them on here for you. So we have an ombre. And we have a neon. So if you need to pause the video at any point, you can and you can see what each one is called. So let's close up the Hero Arts pads. And again, we're going to clean off our stamp. Now, next up are the hybrid pads. I also picked out a colour of hybrid. I'm going to do some wild cherry stamping rather than black outline because I'm going to do some black outline with the memento in a minute. So again, I'm going to just stamp it out. Onto a piece of the Nina White. So 
So we can colour this red hybrid wild cherry in with anything. So I have zig markers, I have my Stampin' Right, I have Distress and I have Copic. I can use a combination of all of them. I can even put some really wet watercolours or sprays on top of this too and it really won't budge. If I use my alcohol marker here on the shard, I can take my brushed corduroy and I can colour in Big Ben. I can take my mint macaron onto the gherkin. I could even be really creative and have some red clouds. That line is not going to budge. So these may not be the best colour choices, but if I lift them up here, you can say that ink hasn't budged on any of those different mediums. So hybrid is great. If you're just starting out with stamping, hybrid is the perfect choice for you to choose for ink pads. Dye pads are your best when it comes to blending. However, if you're just stamping and things and basic colouring in at the moment, then definitely stick with the hybrids. So let's write on here that this is an MFT hybrid. So let's again clean off our stamp. And we're going to go now onto our Mo Memento ink. Now you may be wondering about blending and spritzing and different things like that and we will color, cover that during Distress Week and what the best um, techniques and pads are for things like that. So let's stamp out our memento. We have a lovely impression there. It's a nice strong black. And one thing I do do when I tend to colour with Copics is just a quick blast with my heat gun. Nothing major, but just go over it. So I'm just going to colour in my gherkin which is this building here. And my shard with my Copic. This is a B52, it's a nice blue shade for glass. And again, you can see it's nice and color fast. So let's just write onto this one of Memento. Now I'm going to move on to my chalk ink. So chalk ink, let's grab a piece of black. Chalk ink tends to be a pigment based pad so it will sit on top of your paper which is why it's great on black cardstock. So for instance, let's take this colour box chalk pad which are one of my preferences. This will give you the same effect as a Distress Oxide. And you can see here, mine's not particularly juicy, but it does still stick on top of my image. Let's stamp it out on white and you can see it's true colour. If I was going to recommend something for stamping on black cardstock, it would definitely be the Distress Oxides. They have come out the best on um, anything I've ever used. So you can see there it's a nice pinky colour and you can see here. Now let's compare by taking another coloured pad. This time I'm going to choose the Simon Says Stamp and I'm just going to show you the dye ink. It's a lovely ink but it's not going to come out on black cardstock and this is because it's a dye ink. So you can see all I get here is just a watermark whereas if I stamp it on my white cardstock we're going to get that lovely hydrangea purple. you can see the difference there. So our dye ink gives us a lovely impression on white, as does our chalk ink, but slightly thicker. Our pigments lay on top, whereas our dye inks will absorb in. 
I could emboss this image with clear embossing powder, which I'm going to do with the Adirondack pigment in a moment. But what it will do is you can start stamping it out on dark cardstock, whereas with a dye ink, you're just going to get a watermarked image. So finally, we can move on to two of our other ink pads here. Let's just move these to the side and we can grab another piece of cardstock. So we'll start with our Adirondack pigment. Ooh, there's plastic on there. Now pigment pads also tend to be foam, whereas dye pads tend to be felt. Now Stampin' Up bucked this trend by changing out their pads, but that's just a general rule for you because we're going to stamp with a pigment I'm just going to use my powder tool and I have a preference of the powder tool than the embossing buddy because if I'm doing this on black the powder tool won't give me that chalkboard look if I don't want it uh, whereas the embossing buddy will. So I've stamped this out this is not the newest pad in the world but I'm just going to use some clear embossing powder into my nice little tray and I'll link this tray up for you because they're a great little thing to have around for sequins and embossing powder and they never need to be replaced this one is over 10 years old and we'll just heat emboss this and this is the thing about pigment inks they stay wet for longer so you can emboss them whereas your dyes will quite quickly absorb into your cardstock looks like I caught everything. So I put that clear embossing layer on the top. You can see it's almost like a lacquer that just goes over the top. And that's something you can do with pigment pads. We'll cover heat embossing in the part two of our ink section. So stay tuned for that next week. And finally, or oh, let's just write on this one. So this is the, this is the Adirondack pigment. And I will link all of these pads up for you. So if you see one that you particularly like me working with, you can um, see that on the blog as well. So let's just also write on here. So this is a Simon Says stamp. And this is a chalk box. Okay. Now let's just clean this off for the final time. Now I'm going to ink this up with stays on and I will cover stays on cleaning in the next part of this video with lots of other cleaning tips for you as well. But stays on is very thick, it's solvent based so it won't come off very easily and they do not recommend you use stays on on photopolymers. I do but it is definitely not recommended because if you leave it on there and don't thoroughly clean it off, you can end up damaging your stamp in the longer term. I've never encountered the problem, but I assume someone has somewhere and that's why they don't recommend it to you. So I'm just gonna stamp this out. I'm gonna give it a quick gasp with my heat gun because I don't have the time just to let it dry naturally. And if I use my Copic, now I've heat dried it, it's not going to be too bad, but you can see in a second, so I've built this Copic up and you can see it started to smudge a little bit. Whereas if I use my water-based here on my Big Ben, and I'm gonna do a really bad job of culling in a red bus with my Zig traditional London red bus and the mint macaron on my gherkin. 
so you can see that the Copic here has started to make the stays on um, smudge a little bit but here where I've used the water base there's no movement at all so stays on is also great if you're using shrinky dinks you can also color in watercolors with it it's also pretty good on acetate and non-porous surfaces your glossy cardstock and things like that but I still would probably prefer to reach for my hybrid pads so I'm going to put uh, I'll label this one up and what I'm going to do is I'll put each of these uh, out for you on the screen and I'll leave them there for a couple of moments so if you want to pause the video you can so we have our stays on Thanks for joining us for our Ink Week Roundup. Be sure to join us for the next part of this series. We'll be looking at embossing inks, embossing powders, some speciality pads, and also stamp cleaning. We look forward to seeing you again soon here at Hedgehog Hollow. Happy stamping. See you again. Bye.